In this video, I show you step by step how to build these wind turbine blades. So in this video, it's a how-to video. I'm going to show you how to make very cheap um, turbine blades. So these are the first ones I built. So um, the actual blade length is about 6 inches, but it's an 8 inch piece of wood, so I have 2 inches of overlap, so it can be bolted into the hub here. I'm going to make a four blade now and I'm going to add an extra two inches and I'm also going to make the angle steeper. So this one it starts off at maybe 10 degrees um, and then it goes up to maybe 22. So I'm going to double it. I'm going to have 45 and four blades. That should be um, should make it uh, get more torque at the lower wind speeds. Okay so now for the next one material that I use I just use three eight inch plywood so it's pretty strong plywood to hold the blades together and that's for the hub in the center and then I just use the standard um, one by two now when you're cutting the blades for this you gotta make sure that you avoid the knots you wanna get very straight grain so when you're carving it otherwise you can split you want the grain to go up the blade perfectly if it goes on an angle then you'll compromise the strength of the blade also what you need is, I use these one inch drywall screws, coarse thread. Um, I do all my carving with just a box cutter, works very well, it's a very thin blade, slices easily. And then I use um, 220 grid sandpaper to sand it when you're finished. So the first step is to take your one by two and mark off one, two, three, four, four blades. So in this design I'm doing four blades that are 10 inches. So the actual blade will only be eight, but you need two inches to mount it. Um, so what's really important here is that all the grain is perfectly straight. So here there was a knot, so I'm gonna cut this out. This is gonna be a piece that I'm gonna use, and then this is gonna be a piece I'm gonna use. In this section, I'm gonna cut out. And all the other ones have nice straight grain. So this is what it's gonna look like. Four 10 inch blades. So now we'll start carving the blades after we mark them off. So I marked all of them with two inches. So this is the part that's going to mount. So I'm not going to carve the rest. I'm going to have to carve to form the blade. Now, the way these blades work is they have an airfoil shape. So one side is flat and the other side is curved. And then it has a low angle on the outside. And then as it gets close, it rotates and twists. So it has a higher angle into the airstream. And this is because the center rotates um, less quickly than the outside. If I move this, the inside only moved a small amount and the outside moved more in the same amount of time. So there's much more speed here. So the difference between the incoming air and the rotational speed um, is less. So there's more rotational speed here and in the center there's more incoming air speed. Um, so if you want this turbine to start spinning at very low speeds, you want a very steep angle. Um, so I'm going to go twice as steep as the other one. I'm going to start here, and I'm going to trace out the airfoil shape here with a certain amount of height. And then as I go, I'm going to increase the height so it twists. And then somewhere around here, actually, I'm going to need to have an extra block. I'm going to want it to come up like this. So I'm going to glue blocks onto each one of these on one side so I can create the steep angle um, on the inside here. So the first part of the blade is only going to use this one piece of 2x2, uh, two two. but then for the second part of the blade, um, it's going to be twisted this way, so this is going to be the high side. It's going to come, it's going to rotate to this corner, and then the blade is going to come up and slowly come up here until it hits this point. So what I'm going to do is I took this 4 inch piece, so that's half the blade, which is going to have double thickness in the front, and I'm going to split it on this angle, and then I can use this piece on the next one. So after I split that piece, I have two pieces. So now I'm going to do is I'm going to put glue on the large side here and glue them in position. So all these are going to have um, an angle like this. It's going to be angled like this for all the pieces so that it can rotate. Make sure you don't make one that's angled in the wrong direction because it's going to fight the other blades. So all the blades have to be high in the same direction of rotation. Um, you can flip them sometimes, but uh, you can maybe round it the wrong way, so it's important. So I'm going to take wood glue, which isn't waterproof, but you can seal the blade afterwards, so it seals um, so no moisture can get to the glue. 
I'm going to glue these pieces on here and I'm going to glue all four on and then we're going to wait till it dries and then we can start carving. So the very last step before carving is to mark the piece. So I start just a quarter inch up okay, and that gives me an angle about 10 degrees at the tip. Now again like I said the air it rotates less as you get close to the center so the trailing edge, the back edge, is going to stay on this corner all the way to the end, but the leading edge, the front edge, is going to start twisting. So this is going to raise and it's going to change the angle. So I'm going to have to carve the front to hit this angle all the way around. And that's why I glued this extra piece so I can get the very steep angle at the end. So it's very high on this side and very low on that side. So once you have that, then you can start carving. So now I have all four um, blades glued together. So for carving, uh, what I do is I mount the blade onto a very solid table. And now for the um, top surface, we're angling down as we go to the tip. So you can carve it like this. Okay, you want to carve all the way so you just have that line left. And on this side, you want to carve it all the way down until the bottom corner. Now on this side, we're if you grab um, some grain here, you're only going to grab that grain and you're not going to get um, any of the rest of the blade off. Um, for the back side, you actually have to carve in the opposite direction. So this one we're carving out towards the tip of the blade. On the other side, we have to flip. So this is the back side. So on the back side, we want to go up also to this line, but we have to flip it upside down now so that we can carve in the opposite direction. So we, this way, we actually have to carve like this. So now we're going towards the root. Otherwise, we would grab um, too much. See, if I went here, and I got um, some grain down here, it would cut across and it would cross over what we want to keep. So when you're carving, you would just, you want to carve a spot here, but then it would keep splitting all the way and it would get rid of your tip. So. For the back, you want to carve in to the root, and from the top, you want to carve out to the tip. Okay, also on the back side, there's a cut you have to make with a handsaw. So here, this is where the curve goes up, the point. So when you're carving here, you don't want this to chip all the way in to get your support. So this last two inches, that's what you need for bolting on, and you don't want to carve that away. So you have to cut the section all the way from here to here to prevent that from splitting. So you just take your handsaw and just cut here. So that's it, and you should cut. You can cut all the way up to this point on that side and down to this side on here. So the next step is to cut out this hub. So this is from the 3 8 plywood. So the blades are gonna mount like this and there's gonna be a hole in the center, a gap, which is the same width as each board. It's about an inch and a half. And that's where you can put a nut on there or something to mount it onto a motor, and that's where the shaft's going to be in the center. So the piece that you're cutting, it's um, for this design, it's four inches by four inch square. So once I cut this out, then I can screw the blades in. So these blades are roughly shaped. There's still quite a bit of wood I can take off, but this extra wood allows me to balance them. So once I have them mounted here, I'm going to balance the blades, and I'm going to take off wood based on which blades are uh, too heavy. So I cut out the center hub piece and then I mounted the four blades on it. So you have to draw lines across so you know where to put the blades. Um, also, I like to keep the gap here so that you can put a nut or something um, on the shaft. I drilled the shaft directly in the center and to mount the blades what I did is I just put this um, clamp on and then I drilled two holes and then I put two screws in. And you want the screws to be at about the same spacing to make sure it's all balanced. Uh, I just use one inch um, wood screws from the back. And that works really well. Now for the balancing, you wanna mount the whole system on a very low friction shaft. I'm just using a very small um, wood nail. And I just clamped it on my desk, make sure there's no rubbing. So what you want to do is you want to move it around and stop at about each blade and let go and see if it moves. So that means this down here, these are heavy blades. The heavy blades always go down. So I can do it again here. And it goes, so this here 
is probably the heaviest blade. And these are the light blades. So what you do now is you can take it off or you can try and carve it while it's all attached to the hub. You want to take material off this. You want to continue shaping it. Um, it's very thick here. It's very thick or long here. Take a little bit off and then rebalance until it just sits. You want to, when you let go, you want it just to sit there and you want that for every blade. So if I have it here, you want to let go and have it sit there. So you have to just keep carving the blade, whichever blade is at the bottom. So I just kept taking off material and now the blades are fully balanced. So I can put any blade to the top and it stays there. So this is a very low friction bearing and they stay. There's a little bit of a weight there maybe, but it's pretty much balanced now. The next step is to finish shaping them, but I have to shape them one at a time and make sure that they don't get out of balance, that I don't take too much material off one of the blades, and then I can sand them, make them nice and smooth, and then they should be really good in the wind. And uh, that's how you make a set of turbine blades. All right, so the wind turbine blades are finished. They're properly weighted. All I have to do now is sand it a little more to make them more efficient, but I can just put them in front of this fan And they start spinning. So that's it. They work really well. So I have quite an easy way here to measure the torque, the startup torque of your wind turbine. I'm taking uh, money here with known weight because they don't have a scale. Um, so I know the weight of these coins. And I have two coins at um, 10 inches and two coins at 6 inches. So this is a certain amount of torque. You can multiply the distance from the center with the weight to get the torque. And what I do is I put this in the wind and I put it perpendicular to the ground, or sorry, parallel to the ground. And then if the wind is strong enough to keep it there or slightly lift it, then that is the startup torque. So if I put it in the wind here, you can see it is supporting that weight. And even go a little bit faster. So this is the amount of torque that the wind is um, doing right now. If I take it out of the wind, it just quickly falls down. So all that wind is uh, supporting that amount of weight. So I multiplied the weight of the coin times the distance in inches, and then there was two at 10 and another one at six, and I got 0.278 inch pounds. So that is the torque that I have for the startup. So when I'm sizing a motor at this wind speed, um, I know that I could uh, have a motor that is less torqued than that, just a little bit less, and it would start spinning. So I did the same thing here with the three blade. It's holding this weight. I'm not touching it. And this has uh, half the torque uh, of the larger one. So adding an extra blade and putting a steeper angle definitely helped. But this smaller one reaches much higher speed, so I think I'm going to try and build another larger three blade um, with the less steep angle. All right, so I did the first pass of sanding. I'm uh, trying to get out all the bumps from carving. You can still see there are some bumps. Um, so you just sand it a couple times. I'm using 120 grit sandpaper. And uh, that's really important for the aerodynamics so that the air on the back can go across the curved surface, the airfoil, without separating. Um, if there's bumps, it'll separate from the wood. And like these grooves aren't good, so I can sand more. But yeah, I, run it, I ran it again with the, after I sanded it, and it works really well. So that's it. That's how you build... Uh, wind turbine blades out of wood.